let's let's start from the top. But who who is your who is your company? Uh, what do they do? It's it's called Whipware, and it was uh, it was some technology that I developed uh, probably about 25 years ago when I worked for the Dupont company, the Dupont Explosives, mm. and um, we needed a way at the time to actually quantify blast results. Um, and uh, so we kind of searched throughout the world, and we were looking for some way to be able to characterize or put a number to blast mm. efficiency. And um, I went to Waterloo University in Canada, and uh, they had this process whereby they were trying to enhance imagery and get some engineering data from it. And the name of our company is Whipware. Mm. Uh, the WIP stands for Waterloo Image Process. Ah. So nothing kinky about this. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's disappointing. <laughs> I lose a lot of audience that way. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just going to yeah. dot it that down. So, um, yeah, so we created uh, this way where we would take a picture of broken material and... Um, uh, from that, be able to get some engineering data. Because mm -hmm. before, it would just you'd look at a blast and you'd say, what do you think? Oh, it looks okay. But you really can't optimize a process unless you can benchmark it. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know if you're getting any better or worse unless you can put some numbers on things. Right. Uh, whether you're trying to manage time or or distance or anything else, you, you, need, you need figures, units. Yeah. And so this enabled us to do that. And um, over the years, uh, not only do we measure broken rock uh, blasting, but the whole mining process is nothing more than a comminution stage. You know, you, you blast it, uh, you crush it, you grind it, you mill it. Uh, so all of those stages, the material keeps getting smaller and smaller. And how do you really optimize a process like that if you don't know how well you're doing through every stage. So does this fall under sensor-based or processing? Is it, is, or is it a different technology under a different flag? Uh, I suppose you could regard it as sensor-based. Uh, again, traditionally, if you wanted to measure the size of materials, you would pass it through a graded opening, screens or whatever. Right. Um, and that's still the de facto standard for doing granulometry. But uh, in many cases, it takes a long time by the time you get a, a sample and hopefully it's representative and you, uh, you pass it through all these screens and you weigh the factions that are captured on each screen. And by the time you get results, it could be, uh, I don't know, many hours later, mm -hmm. uh, which is too late to act upon that information. Our technology allows you to measure that material in real time. And, and if you're off spec, you can adjust it. Mm -hmm. So that's, and it's not disruptive. You know, we have online systems that measure material on conveyor belts. We have uh, systems that measure material in haulage trucks, mm -hmm. uh, dumping throughout the whole process. So it's, it's uh, yeah, really quite. When you say non-disruptive, what, what, what do you, you mean by that? Is it doesn't interrupt the system? That's right. Well, if, you know, if you wanted to get a, a, a sieve sample, you'd have to stop the production in order to get the sample. Right. And uh, in, in, in the industry, that means you have to stop a conveyor belt and maybe lock it out so that it doesn't inadvertently start while you're in mm -hmm. there. And then uh, by the time you go through all that process and that is just... Data is only good if, if you get it in a timely manner. Right. You know. There's all kinds of people that collect data, but uh, I mean, if it's a month later, what are you gonna do with that? Yeah. It might give you some ideas and some trending, but it's way, way too late to improve anything. Yeah. So. You said you developed, like, as in you personally developed this? Uh, myself and I had a couple of business partners from Waterloo. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. And so how has the technology evolved? It's, it's, really, it's really evolved rapidly uh, because uh, uh, imaging technology is really improved. Mm -hmm. So is computer technology. Uh, so has the various sensors. You know, um, uh, at first when we developed it, you would actually go out on a blast and take a picture with an ordinary camera, and bring it into a 
a software program that yeah. would allow you to measure it. And uh, now it's, uh, I mean, there's automated online systems. We actually control production machinery now. Uh, in fact, we're finding that uh, everybody carries a device. Mm -hmm. I've got an iPhone. I can use my iPhone to actually measure material. That iPad that you've got in front of you, you could use that to measure our stuff. Yeah, and then and now does that integrate into a team or is it one device or does that get sent back somewhere or it, how does that all work? It could be any of those things. You, you could actually take a picture, you could, you could do it yourself mm -hmm. uh, or uh, there's online systems that would feed it into a historian or actually control some production machinery. Uh, we even have people that are flying drones over blasts mm. and uh, taking tho those images wow. and bringing them in and getting them processed. So it's, it, it really opens up a whole bunch of different avenues. Well, that must be just incredibly groundbreaking to be able to fly over, a, you know. A Literally groundbreaking. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no <laughs> pun intended. Um, d d because the work that it would take to go in and do samples at one time, mm -hmm. that's... So this technology, now does it fully replace it or does it give you a, a guideline to go, okay, there is something worth digging in and testing here? Um, it, it helps you at the start to design the blast. Uh, explosives is a really, I'll say, complicated industry in that there's so many variables. Right. You know, the geology, the rock type, there's many different types of explosives. There's different timing you can introduce. I mean, there's so many things that you you can do to affect a blast. Mm -hmm. um, there is an optimum size for every blast, depending on your production equipment and, and what the final use of it is. Um, so you really need something to be able to track figures. You know, you can, you could just track the characteristic size of a blast and then you could wait until all the figures came in you know for maintenance uh, throughput energy consumption all of those things and and you'll soon twig in that hey when when the size range is here our production costs are there mm -hmm. and as the size goes this way the production cost seems to follow it down so it tells you right away where you should be going right you know and it's not always you have to make it finer mm -hmm. But in many cases it is. Maybe it's just to eliminate some oversize. Right. And and so again, you you need the tool. So it is. It's a, it's educating on you for the next blast as well. Yeah. That you'll you'll and yeah. how you'll set things up. Yeah. What's a challenge? Uh, I'm I'm sure with these new technologies. As a, I'll, I'll say this in a two part question. What is the challenge with the technology? Um, mm -hmm. As in where what needs to get improved so it is even better. Um, and entering into markets, uh, what challenges do you face? Um, the, the, the challenges we typically found was you're, you're trying to introduce a novel new technology into a traditional business. Right. Okay, so there's, you know, there's people that are saying, hey, I've been in this industry for 30 years and I never had this, you know, we can do without it. Yeah. So they're not really that or they traditionally haven't been receptive to change like this. Right. But uh, certainly now we're seeing with uh, remote sensing, with robotics, with automation, I think the mining industry is going like the, like the automotive industry is right. going. Um, you know, there was a, a lot of resistance maybe to automation initially, but today you would never think about building an automobile by hand. Mm -hmm. you, you just, it doesn't make sense. Right. And I think mining industry is going to find the same way that, uh, you know, it's uh, the old ways we did things are probably, you know, won't fly in the future. It just, you, you can't be cost competitive to do that. Yeah. And, so are you, and are you seeing that shift firsthand? We are. Yeah. We are. Yeah. We're, uh, we're global. We, you know, we have clients throughout the world. Um, typically, and maybe the... Uh, Maybe in Europe and, and more more developed countries where labor rates tend to be higher and things like that, right. they they have to be more efficient if they mm -hmm. want to be the low cost producer, and uh, so they're really grabbing up on technology like that because it just makes so much sense for them. Mm -hmm. um, there's a big emphasis these days for uh, things like uh, environmental concerns, 
and and so when you do it more efficiently you're probably more more environmentally conscious yeah. uh, energy is a big uh, a big thing for most people these days and yeah. it's one of your big costs yeah uh, so it certainly reduces that mm -hmm. one of the most efficient ways of breaking material is still chemical energy explosives right and uh, so if you utilize them if you don't blast it properly, then it's going to cost you more to crush it, and right, grind it, yeah. and mill it, and all the rest of it. So it's, it's a big chain of events. You can't really look at one discrete element. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the whole picture. Yeah. And you know, I looked at, you know, look, we did an episode about autonomous vehicles, remote vehicles, you know, that um, we just did uh, this on this sensor-based ore processing. Oh, excuse me. Um, this doesn't seem... Now, are you putting, now, I'm, tr I'm trying to get a clear picture. Are you putting the sensors on the machine, or is this all on, on picture-based now, that this you choose where you're going to take a picture of? We, we have systems that do everything. Um, we, we have machines that actually measure material in real time on conveyor belts. Have some water. Sorry. Um, we, <laughs> actu <Apologies. laughs> we actually have... Uh, sort of robot <coughs> machines that measure the material in haulage trucks as they're dumping. We take pictures of each layer as it ravels out of a truck, yeah. and we analyze each layer, and then we put all those layers together. I can tell you exactly what's in the truck now, and then if I want to know what the blast is, I just take all the trucks and merge them together. Now I know what the blast was. And then uh, we have uh, other systems like that that measure the material that goes into a rail car or a ship, uh, you know, or anything like that. And one of the challenges we actually came upon, and I see you have this uh, pamphlet in front of you, mm -hmm. we thought creating the data was the big our reason for being, mm. but it's not necessarily. It's getting the data to the people that can act on it. Mm. So we found out that, hey, you know, we had a lot of clients that were, they have all kinds of data historians and that stuff like that. And if nobody looks at it or nobody acts on it, what good is that? Right. Uh, so we decided, look, everybody carries a device. You know, you've got, uh, you've got your, your iPhone, you've got your iPad. Let's integrate this so that when that data does come through, it goes right to your device. And now people are more, much more accountable. You know, they can act on things. Yeah. Uh, you, once you know what your optimum size is in an operation, uh, you, can, you can design this operating envelope. And as soon as the curve goes out of that, it, it, it rings a little alarm. Right. You know, so your phone can go off and you look. and You can phone the plant. You can say, what's going on? Well, what do you mean, what's going on? Well, for the last uh, 20 minutes, you've been running off spec. Oh, now somebody's going to act on this now. That's interesting, right? yeah. In the past, I mean, maybe your accountant would tell you the, at the end of the month, what the hell happened here? You know, it's why'd, too you, late. Lose, why'd yeah. you lose $3 million? So, yeah, it's <laughs> I mean, you can understand how we've empowered people now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, and the people that are actually doing the work, they know they're accountable now. Mm hmm. You know, so we've we've created more of a, a factory mentality, maybe to the mining industry. Right. You know, so communications improve now. And what okay. now? This integration. What? Uh, how how new is this with the iPad and and integrating the technologies? Is that? We we put this out two years ago. It was it was kind of a an idea on my part. I thought, well, let's let's put this out. We'll sell it through the Apple Store. It's a thousand dollars a copy. Bang away you go, because everybody has this already. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we've there've been over five thousand downloads, I think, really? in the first wow. eighteen months. Yeah. And actually, really? I had a question with a, the accuracy of this. Like, w what is the accuracy? It's it's very good. Uh, we can uh, we can usually match uh, traditional sieving. Sometimes we have to do a calibration, mm -hmm. but uh, no, it's very very close. Uh, See, what happens, because this technology is so easy to implement, you tend to acquire a much larger sample. It's more right. representative. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if, if you had to go out with a 
bushels or barrels or something to grab a sample, it's only going to be small relative to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas with imaging, because we don't actually have to grab the sample and that it's, we see all of it. Mm -hmm. Like statistically, it just overwhelms any errors that can, yeah. you know. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and, and because it's imaging, it's scalable. So I can use the same device to measure material in a micron range as to marry, measure something the size of an elephant. Wow. And, and there's not many tools that allow you to do that. Right. You know? Especially in mining. Yeah. 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 And uh, so it, it's, it's kind of interesting and challenging. And You know, one, one thing you said that struck me is because on the, um, Brent Hilscher was just in um, before you, you sat down. And, um, okay. and he was talking about this sensor-based technology. And one of the questions I asked, well, does it save the equipment because there's less wear on the equipment? Yeah. And his answer was, in theory, yes, but if, you, if the plant is set up to do 1,000 tons, mm -hmm. you don't, you're still going to want to run 1,000 tons through it. It's just now 500 of those tons yeah. are not going to be wasted. Yeah. And, and that really struck me. It's not about running less through. And they, I mean, they, want, they bought the equipment because they want to to use it, mm -hmm. but they want the right stuff. And that's really where this technology is, is the game changer. Yeah. yeah. Well, and, and, and in addition to doing, like we actually measure size and shape, and, and we actually do volumetrics too. So we can tell you the number of cubic mm -hmm. yards of material or cubic meters or whatever you went through. Uh, from that, you can actually maybe marry it with a belt weightometer and, and compute densities. Yeah. So a lot of these mining companies are, are processing. Uh, certainly mining is nothing more than material handling, very yeah. sophisticated material handling. Many times they're processing material that's essentially waste. Mm -hmm. And so if you know the density, maybe sometime you can differentiate, oh, this is waste material. Maybe we divert this off and not send it to the process. There's so many savings when you can start to do that, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. Well, and... <laughs> What was the question? I, ha I had one of these questions that I was, I was going to ask, and it, it, I'm drawing a bit of a blank <laughs> on it. <laughs> yeah. So I might have to come and find you again. No, no problem. Ask you, but, um, well, actually, something I was going to ask about it too is, what is the technology? Because I was reading on, on one of my reports um, the, all the different types of technology that goes into these sensors. Mm -hmm. So this technology, what is, is it imaging? I'm, I'm assuming it's not using heat or some sort of magnet sensor. So what is the actual technology it's using? It's, it's just imaging. Uh, I mean, uh, cameras have really improved. Uh, computer technology has really improved. Uh, lasers have improved. Uh, all of this stuff gets married together, you right. know, with this. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. It's just everything's kind of coalescing these days. Yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. And and you're, it will this be commonplace? I mean, you said you have five thousand. Did you say five thousand? Five thousand downloads within eighteen That's months. Yeah, That's unbelievable. A lot of downloads. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was expecting and, and a few hundred of you to say, but yeah. I was expecting five thousand. Yeah, and and it's it's a simple thing. I mean, anybody can use it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of a gateway product because yeah. we figure. Once people understand the value of data, um, they'll probably gravitate toward our, our automated systems. Right. You know, because your time is valuable too. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the drones, uh, it really lends itself to, to drone technology. Yeah. They, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they blast the material, they send a drone out. It used to be you'd, you'd be out with a camera it might take you four or five hours to take pictures on the ground. Yeah. And you can take the same thing in four or five minutes with a drone. It, it just f flies the flight plan. The overlap is already there. The, you know, the, the stitching is there. Bring it into our technology and instantly you have the results. Like, you know, Even with you being involved in it and developing this technology, does it still amaze you when you step back and look at what is oh, yeah. happening? Yeah. I just, I find it, the more I look at it, the more unbelievable I find yeah. it. Actually, you know, and I, you won't be interested in this, but when we started this, and computer technology wasn't the way it is. We would take photographs, mm -hmm. photographic film. This is 25 years ago. Eight by 10 photographs and put tissue paper and students in that would trace the outline of each no and every way. particle. <laughs> and then we would measure the areas of each of those particles. Really? And so when computers came in, 
and digital images, I mean, that was a big breakthrough. So uh, we've seen every step as they go wow. through, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's... Uh, and you, you're the president of the company, right? Yeah. 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 So, so for you, are you, have you, uh, this is switching gears a little bit on you, but um, you know, that as, I mean, that's quite a jump yeah. to this. Yeah. So as you as leading the company, have you pushed for that innovation to keep on developing? Um, you know, you, you hear a lot of noise about new technologies that are coming mm. in and having to pick which direction to take. The, I mean, those are major decisions you have to make for the company. Yeah. Yeah. So how have you managed those decisions? Do you, you know, are you, is it your personality you kind of lean towards saying I've, yes? I've, al I've always been disruptive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> My teachers used to tell me that. And, and, and I used to think it was a flaw, but, uh, and maybe it is. <laughs> But uh, no, I like uh, asking why, and I like uh, you know disrupting things, and uh, it's uh, yeah. There's no status quo. You, right. you keep moving, yeah. and I've uh, my son is very uh, very astute when it comes to technology, mm -hmm. and uh, and I we have a real a real good team, and you know we work with researchers and all kinds of institutions and that because we're sort of at the leading edge. Uh, uh, we get into other things, uh, you know, we've certainly done work for uh, NASA and uh, uh, various aerospace organizations and that. We're talking here because it's a mining show, I'm talking to you about minerals and stuff like that, but this technology can also be used in agriculture, mm. okay, anywhere where you've got materials that maybe you want to detect contaminants, you want to, you know, do some other things, you know, rice is graded based on the number of broken, mm. you know. Medicine has some applications for us, you know, like we can do cellular counts, we can do uh, cultures and growths, and uh, so it just goes on and on. The chemical industry uses us, uh, the explosives industry uses us for uh, measuring pearl sizes, because that's a very important parameter for making ANFO. Right. Um, emulsions, explosives or emulsions, and we, we count the micelles. So again, it goes on and on and on, but you know, it's not just mining, it's, a, it's yeah. a whole bunch of other things. Well, and we focus on different, I mean, our, our role really is, is to support the industrial sector, and uh, mm -hmm. I, I hope you enjoyed the in interview enough that maybe, uh, maybe another interview somewhere down the road and we can sure. dig into a few other things. About Always enjoy do. talking about myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. And disrupting. <laughs> yes, and disrupting. <laughs> Tom, thank you very much for sitting down with us. Yep. Appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank okay. you so much. No problem. <laughs>